Okay, probably we should start now uh, with the artist talks. If everyone is here, okay. Um, I think I can make a short introduction of our participants today. Uh, so we have this session artist talks uh, with uh, Anna Shustikova, Roman Slatkov, and Ivan Netkachev. Uh, these are all uh, students of uh, Rochinka Art School participating in Arts Electronic uh, Garden Moscow Uncanny Dream, curated by uh, me, Oksana Cvetina, and uh, Helena Nikanole, my co curator and colleague. Uh, so, I will introduce our participants today. Um, Roman Slatkov, Roma, Roma, hello, hi. Uh, uh, Roman uh, is a Moscow-based artist. Uh, artist. He holds a bachelor's degree in biology and a master's degree in neuroscience. He works with uh, 3D graphics, video games, creative coding, and interactive installations. Uh, in Uncanny Dream project, uh, Roman is participating with his interactive uh, installation, which is called Manifesting Latent Space. Uh, our second participant today is Anna Shustikova. Uh, Anna has a bachelor degree in physics and applied math. Uh, she also is a Moscow-based artist, and currently she also studies at Drochenko Art School. In her artwork, Anna explores the connection and confrontation between body and power, and she works with artificial intelligence, video performances, sculpture, and installation. On the Uncanny Dream exhibition, you can uh, see Anna's project, which is titled You Can Touch, You Can Play. It is basically an interactive project, and you can all become a part of this project. And our third, uh, our third participant today is Ivan Netkachev. Uh, Ivan holds a bachelor degree in theoretical linguistics and currently works as a researcher in High School of Economics. Uh, of Economics Moscow. Um, his interests include generative poetry, text, and image generating automats, as well as collecting, categorizing, and cataloging and in, of images and representations. On our exhibition on Kenya Dream, you can see Ivan's work, which is titled Top in Light, a work using neural networks. Um, I think uh, we can start with Roman. Are you ready? Yes, yeah, uh, sure. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot for the introduction. I guess I'll start with briefly describing my work and then I can also like transition to some more general information about my artistic practice. And I hope that you'll guide me with questions or sure. remarks. Yeah. So I guess I can share my screen. Okay, so do you see my, sc my screen right now? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so now you can see the way that my installation looks at, in the, at the Electro Museum right now. Yeah, so I'll give just some brief details about uh, like the way neural networks work, which will help you understand my particular installation. So what the Latin space is, is a vector space, which represents the hidden deep layer of the neural network. Uh, and uh, in, trained, uh, in trained neural network, uh, the way that data is organized in this space and in this layer uh, actually represents the way that neural network uh, understands, we can say like that, uh, the data which is, has been trained on. Yes, and usually this Latin space is um, approached as a kind of a black box because while the mathematic of well, neural networks training is more or less well, understandable, still it's quite hard to say like why why the neural network trained exactly in this particular way. So how how why did this, why the data became structured in the way it became structured. Yes, and uh, my aim was to provide this kind of interactive, haptic uh, access to the Latin space uh, so that participants can not only like 
see the results of the linear interpolation in Latin space, but also kind of touch this layer, which is usually hidden and only accessed algorithmically or mathematically. And for me, this kind of this presents an important tension between this uh, like virtual vector space and the actual real space of the gallery, which Aksana and Lena mentioned. Thank you. Um, yes, and also for me, another important tension here is that while I encourage participants to uh, to play with my installation in, in kind of this childish, innocent manner, I also want participants to think about who, who can play with Latin spaces in the other neural networks made by corporations, governments, and things like that. Because uh, neural networks are only as unbiased as people who collected data sets, uh, labeled data sets, and things like that. So it's never truly objective or nothing, nothing of that sort. Uh, as for the neural network which I'm using, uh, it's ImageNet, as Lena said. It's a huge data set of images, and it is also kind of well known for containing a lot of biases because these images were labeled in order for neural network to be trained. Uh, and thus, this labeling process uh, introduced a lot of like ideological biases, which now this neural network uh, naturally contains. And for me, it was an important gesture not to train or fine tune some neural network, but just to take the existing one and provide access towards this deep hidden layer. And also what I, okay, maybe I should actually show you the way it <laughs> operates. Okay, here are some photos. Yeah, so this is like the, the intended way for installation to be interacted with, with this red ball uh, on the floor. But what I also did not intend, but really enjoyed about my work is that it can actually be accessed um, in different ways. So while I provide this uh, aesthetically coherent mode of access with these red balls, uh, it can also be accessed by any other uh, red thing, which will be recognized by the web camera. So Anna Shustikova, who is also here, has hacked my work several times. Here's the way it looks. Yeah, for me, this is a very, very important aspect, even though it's emerged um, unconditionally. <laughs> Still, because it it extends it extends this project, it extends the way of interaction with my work. It provides even more more access, more interaction, more like playfulness into it. Yes. So yeah, and as Lena mentioned and demonstrated, there is also a web version of this project. Maybe so. Okay, give me a second. Well, anyway, I think that Len already showed it, so I probably won't launch it right now. Yeah, it's it's basically the same, but what I liked about it is that, well, first of all, it's access it's accessible from anywhere. Uh, and also here I work with 3D space as opposed to the 2D space in the gallery. Uh, yeah, so actually afterwards, I would like to talk about some other projects of mine. So maybe there are some questions about this work in particular, which you would like to address. Oops. Uh, we have a question in chat by Mark. Uh, mm -hmm. When you interact with an installation, do we become a part of it? Well, I, I think it's a, a very broad question, but I, I would say that it's not like you become a part of installation when you interact with it, but it actually it becomes an installation in the process of interaction. This like without without the interaction, without the participant, it practically well, does not, not exist. Doesn't right. exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Uh, can I ask a question? As an artist uh, that online you can interact with the project, not only moving red balls, but any uh, any of them, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, so it's there is some difference. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, in, in, in the interactive way, yeah. <laughs> okay, also, um, uh, when you show the project for the first time in Rochester Art School, you used a different model. You used this model with the faces. And for the presentation at Ars Electronica, you used Image, ImageNet. Um, what do you think about the, the difference between two models and which one do you like more? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> it's, it's hard to say which one I like more, but what I think of them, um, I think that this uh, FFHQ uh, data set model, it's actually, it's, it's very interesting because, well, it's also like very, very popular because it generates, it generates the new faces of people which do not exist in real life. So that's kind of cool, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, but with ImageNet, what I, what I preferred about it and why I decided to use the ImageNet's uh, neural network for the, our uncanny dreams uh, exhibition is that it's actually it's a bit more creepy i guess and while in the fhq neural network while it generates new faces it's still like they're still all of them are faces and when i'm using image nets neural network it's like like you could probably see on the video like on in one part it's pizza and then it's some kind of weird spider dog so you know, it's kind of it, it demonstrates like it's a more 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 uncanniness yeah that's true okay cool any more questions about this project no yeah. maybe on swap card i can check and do you want to continue somehow working with latent spaces with this mm. hidden space of neural networks uh i'm not sure yet to be honest because I really like the way like this project turned out and the way it was like the reaction to this project also it, like was very pleasant for me that it draws so much attention. Yeah, so I think like I, I see the ways to enhance this project in particular, for example, I can like um, introduce other modes of interaction, for example, because this is just w one way to interact with Latin space. Yeah, and that's something which I probably say further that like for me in general right now, I think uh, interfaces is the most interesting thing for as for an artist. Yes, yeah, so maybe I could think about other ways to interface with it. Uh, also, I wanted to ask you a question. Why do you think uh, people like this project so much? I mean, uh, many people, many of them, they have no clue about neural networks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the, like these, the, the way that installation is presented, like with this like kind of childish uh, balls and on, on the ground, which kind of encourage you, at least I, I intended them to encourage participants to play with it. And I think it naturally, naturally invites participation. Yeah, and actually that's like, that's exactly my intention. So I'm very happy that it worked this way because, um, because what, what I wanted to create is a space of, you know, this uh, childish, un, unstructured game when you do not know the rules in, in advance. And with neural network, you don't know the rules ever. Yeah, so, yeah, so you, you, when you interact with this Latin space, when you see like you made this action and, and then you got this result, you try to map this, your actions to the results which you get. And I think this is a very, very sincere, very process, process Processual way to it to is another mode to access neural network and another way to approach it in general. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. What What about our, uh, other uh, projects which you wanted to show us? Yeah. Sure. I will just show them briefly, I guess. Um, we don't have so much time. Yeah, yeah, of course. So one of them is Out of None Place, which I made with 
uh, Unity. Mm -hmm. Game uh, engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe I'll show just some small video. So I just wanted to show it to kind of extend on the fact that I, uh, but that I'm very focused on interfaces right now because what I'm doing in this particular project is I'm introducing the way to interact with in-game objects by uh, haptic interaction with the out-game object. Actually, yes, yeah, so kind of providing this alternative access to the game world. And yeah, and this actually, I just re realized that I probably should talk about it uh, today. This is my earlier work from 2019. Oh. Uh Huh? Actually, Art of Non Place is also an interactive work, right? Yeah, 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 sure. Like, yeah, yes. what I'm saying is that mm -hmm. you interact with the in game objects by interacting with the uh, re real world. Mm -hmm. I, I would say it is kind of your theme, like, because Non Places is super connected with, with latent spaces and all these. All this, um, clues how to interact with the uh, virtual place, digital space, which is also a non-place. It looks like um, like a theme of your of your practice. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's maybe why I wanted to talk about this. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, and another one just like to like show my earlier work from 2019. This is a slightly different topic, but here what I'm doing with the interface is actually uh, is actually showing kind of this gradient of accessibility. So, for example, participants have full control over the position of this spiral on the screen, which they can just move with the laptop. They have very very limited control of the of its shape because it's audio reactive, so it just reacts to any uh, any sonic input, which is around them and they have no 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 access at all to some other parts of the structure yeah so this is just a way to talk about some earlier work with interfaces cool cool hope you will continue these uh, these experiments with uh, with latent spaces and digital spaces it looks like like a very um, ambitious one field, I would say. Thanks a lot, I probably will. Okay, thank you, Roma. Um, maybe um, maybe we, we have some questions from the audience, no? Oh. You can add your questions later, and we will um, anyway check uh, check the chat uh, after all artist talks. And maybe we should give the word to our next participant. Uh, Anna Shustikova. Okay. Hey, hi okay. everyone. Nice to see all you or your nicknames at least here in Zoom. Uh, I think I will start with my uh, ongoing project, uh, You Can Touch, You Can Play, uh, which is uh, exposed uh, at this uh, Uncanny Dream exposition, exhibition. And maybe afterwards I will say something about my other uh, projects. Um, actually, uh, this year is the first time when I started to experiment with uh, neural networks. Um, and uh, we had a course with Elena Nicanoli uh, as a tutor, um, where she showed us uh, different ways and different, uh, different ways how we can work with neural networks, different architectures. And of course, uh, we talked uh, about clip glass, uh, this uh, um, pretty popular uh, architecture of neural networks, which generates uh, images from text. And I started experimenting with it, with it. 
actually I started this project as a kind of play because uh, I had uh, different uh, notebooks uh, in collab where I put it, uh, wrote different texts uh, and uh, I came up with strange things because when I started to write something about women or I don't know, beauty or female body or feminist art or something like that. I uh, got, maybe I should show something, um, quite strange and sometimes even uh, pornographic images. Um, I have maybe, don't know why it don't want to show you, sorry, one moment. Um, okay. Now you can see uh, uh, the first <laughs> image here. Uh, actually, this one is uh, exposed in uh, Electro Museum at a fine part of uh, our exhibition. And uh, so I started to, uh, I continued this experiment because uh, at first I thought maybe there is a kind of mistake or maybe I get these results now, but when I write the same, the same word for the next time, I will get some other images, but no, uh, every time I experiment experimented with women, I got something fleshy, um, maybe something like that or like that, uh, undressed, uh, sexualized. Uh, for example, when I wrote something about men, at least uh, they were always wearing something. Uh, also, I started experimenting with beauty and uh, when I started with human faces, uh, I got uh, pretty standard, 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 very difficult work, uh, standard images, uh, always white, maybe with white hair, uh, smile, lipstick, and something like that. Sometimes Asian, but also looking pretty the same. Uh, so all this uh, seemed for me to be a kind of bias about femininity, about uh, the concept of beauty, which uh, came to ImageNet uh, data sets, uh, which are used by uh, original clip plus architecture. Uh, and uh, this bias now uh, is shown to us by a neural network as a new standard of beauty or of femininity and so on and so forth. So I generated uh, hundreds uh, of such images. I, uh, for this time, I stopped uh, on woman. Uh, so I asked you to us to generate woman, generate woman again, generate some more woman. And uh, I uh, got um, collected a small data set uh, and trained a style gun model. Um, to produce some such images uh, by its own without access to ImageNet, uh, because I can't uh, influence uh, ImageNet to make them see women in a different way, but uh, I can influence uh, my own uh, neural network. And so here at uh, Ars Electronica and Uncanny Dream Exposition, I propose uh, uh, people to participate in creating new data set, a uh, new data set of women. Uh, so I ask people to upload images which uh, they think uh, are better representing women than all these uh, flashy ones. Uh, and now I have uh, just about 100 pictures but we've just started uh, and opened our exhibition on Friday. I mostly, and this is interesting too, I wouldn't of course show uh, 
the exact pictures because maybe for some people they are personal because I think uh, uh, some people uh, uploaded uh, their own portraits or their uh, own photographs, uh, but uh, uh, some people went uh, another way, for example, cutting uh, portraits of women from video clips and uh, all this is quite interesting uh, how people think of what woman is. For example, my mom thinks that I am woman and she uploads pictures of me. Uh, so you can also participate uh, in uh, this. Uh, I can uh, share, for example, there is a link in uh, on our website or I can share a link here in comments uh, if you want. Uh, so maybe right now I can stop sharing uh, the screen. Mm, and uh, maybe I should say some words about my artistic practice in general. Because can I have a question? Can okay. I have a question? Uh, did you try, when you uh, tried to generate some images, did you try uh, to generate uh, like beautiful woman or beautiful person? And what would it generate if you were asked to generate beautiful person? Would it be a uh, woman or man? Uh, actually, I haven't tried that. And maybe after this uh, <laughs> artist talk, I will try because this is really interesting because when I generated uh, uh, something about uh, human and person and future of body, it was always something like man, not women. Mm -hmm. But I haven't tried with uh, beauty and uh, person. It could be interesting. Yeah, I think. Um, I'm super interested in how this project will develop because the stereotypes of beauty are changing so fast now, even in high fashion or in uh, like like mass media. And uh, I'm super interested how fast these stereotypes will change. Um, will will change in uh, like will change so much that even neural networks will will see this change. So I will like uh, take a look on this project uh, for a while. I'm hoping uh, it will um, it will have a lot of uh, a lot of material to to develop. Absolutely. And I encourage everyone. Yes, <laughs> I, I will just finish that. I encourage everyone to participate in it and, and send your pictures because it is it is super curious. Actually, I think uh, that um, for me, it's interesting to continue not with such um, unconscious biases, but uh, with the uh, beauty algorithms which are made uh, pretty consciously because uh, there are such neural networks uh, uh, which are created to score beauty of the face, to range faces, or to say you that you need uh, plastic surgery of your nose because it mm. doesn't uh, look ideal. Uh, such algorithms exist uh, actually, and they are used in um, some uh, social media or in cosmetology or in anti-age therapy. And uh, I hope to continue, maybe not this exact project, but uh, a new one with this subject. So it can be sure. a series of projects about this topic. Yep. Yeah, sounds great. Ooh. So do we have uh, some questions from the audience? If not, maybe you can show us uh, some some other of your projects. Uh, I may uh, tell a little bit what I'm interested in as an artist, because uh, as Oksana said in the beginning, that I'm interested in this interaction of body and technology. And when we are talking about, uh, for example, neural network, it's Maybe the most popular part of it is recognition, uh, different types of recognition, face recognition, gait recognition, emotion recognition. And I hope to work more with this. 
but uh, of course, uh, <laughs> machine learning isn't the only technology which exists, uh, and actually not the only technology which uh, is used for recognition, for example. And this uh, spring, uh, I made a project about um, different uh, type of recognition uh, of factor analysis, um, which uh, is used, uh, could be used even in courts as an evidence of uh, uh, a person uh, that person made some crime. For example, here in Russia, it's often used uh, to, um, in cases of murders or rapes, uh, even which were made uh, some time ago, a year ago, two years ago, uh, because uh, orders could be collected from a crime scene and uh, stuck somewhere for a while, for several months or years. Uh, but this practice uh, isn't um, uh, people who make this expertise, they say that is precise and very accurate, but uh, the procedure uh, is mm, it, there is no transparency. So uh, there are so many uh, questions actually to the to how this procedure here in Russia uh, is made. Uh, made by dogs, for example, not by any uh, rocket science technology. Uh, and uh, I uh, collected cases uh, uh, when uh, this practice, this expertise was somehow adopted and made objects of carbon, um, activated carbon, uh, the material which uh, absorbs, uh, smells, uh, orders very well. So maybe I can show just uh, a couple of pictures of uh, one of such objects. Mm -hmm. It was uh, exhibited. I don't know if you see it or not. Here in Moscow, this is a rope and uh, the story in Russian actually about uh, one of such uh, crimes. Uh, I think uh, my time is... <laughs> Is about to over, so maybe I wouldn't tell about anything else. But why didn't you show us pictures? More pictures? No, I mean, like you show, uh, showed all this project folder. I mean, uh, you didn't show pictures, like really. Uh, ah, sorry. Make us understand. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. this one. Yes, it does. So. Mm -hmm. How it was exhibited, uh, Journey Ultimate Exhibition and the respect of the old gallery in June. And mm -hmm. maybe a little bit closer, close up to this material. I don't know. Can you see it right now? Yeah, 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 yes. we can. Yeah, we can. Uh, actually, I have a question. Uh, so, do they only use dogs for this kind of expertise or they? Um, they, I, I think I could imagine that they could use some like a chemical analysis or something like that, like uh, to identify the smell. But no, they use dogs because uh, chemical analysis, uh, of course, is much more accurate, but um, it is concentrated on uh, specified uh, orders. And here you should uh, uh, identify a person. Mm -hmm. And this is somehow a very complicated smell uh, containing of different parts and different molecules. Uh, so uh, they use dogs. And uh, it uh, looks uh, pretty strange, you know, they put uh, uh, cones, uh, metal cones in a um, circle, uh, and uh, one person puts uh, some kind of uh, something smelly in these uh, cones mm -hmm. and another person comes with a dog and they shouldn't know uh, where the right smell is. Mm, they use different dogs uh, several times and they wow. say they make this ex expertise uh, uh, precise, uh, something like, uh, oh, I forgot. Uh, 
how precise is it, but uh, they prove and the uh, mm, books that the criminal that this is. It is, it's strange. But also I think it's, it's pretty interesting how we could identify this smell by person. I mean, with chemical analysis, uh, what kind of uh, set of molecules uh, create this kind of smell? Actually, several days ago, I've read a news uh, that uh, some DNA ana analysis in the air that you can uh, come into the room and get molecules in there and understand that some person is hiding uh, uh, somewhere in the wardrobe or under the sofa. I don't know, uh, but I haven't read it properly, but it intrigued me a lot. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds interesting. Okay. I like a lot about your works that you use digital instrument instruments but create physical objects uh, like, like a printed material in you can touch, you can play and this rope sculpture on the on the last one project. It look no I, I mean just I like I like that about your works. It looks um it looks uh, available to to exhibit them in different spaces and it makes them it, and and it makes them more like um extended for, for for different reasons so it's definitely i think your strong side of your practice thank you thank you anna uh okay if we don't have any questions from the audience we can uh, we can invite Ivan, Nyatka Ivan Nyatkachev uh, to talk about his practice. Please. Mm, hi, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm going to share my screen. And just like um, previous speakers, I'm going to um, show my, um, my recent work first from um, the Uncanny Dream exhibition. And then I will proceed and talk, uh, talk a bit about my practice in general. So yeah, I, I guess you, you've already seen it. If you, if, you, if you checked our website or if you, um, if you listened to our um, curators, uh, my, my work in, well, it's, it basically looks like this. It's a light box on, on the wall. Um, and um, it's called stopping light, and um, those images are generated by um, the um, neural network. <clears throat> um, well, well, um, I, I, I think that now, after after seeing those um, great, uh, great uh, pieces of artwork by Anna Shustikova and uh, Raman Solatkov, uh, you can see that neural networks uh, can generate. Um, a very different kinds of images. They can um, can be used to generate um, the images of faces or um, human bodies or um, maybe dogs or cakes. But um, um, there is there are also um, neural networks that can generate images or of um, architectural objects. And um, I am um, like very big fan of architectural photos. So um, uh, when I found out that there is um, a, a neural network that can generate um, the images of churches, I was pretty excited by this fact. So that's how my this, this work started. So I, I found out that um, the StyleGun2 neural network, uh, which, which is used to generate um, uh, images of certain uh, kinds, um, um, can be um, well. Well, it can also generate images of charges, and I took this model and I decided to um, like play with it somehow, to because you know the charge uh, by itself um, is is a very interesting object because um, well it's in it's um, it's 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 uh, interesting from a formal point of view because it's like uh, very complicated architecture um, and it's also interesting from um, a conceptual point of view because it's it's about it's something about the relationship with some um, other non-present uh, world 
or, or it's something about God. So it's, it's, uh, those are not just buildings, but buildings with some special status. And I decided to, to um, I, mean, I mean, to um, make it look less real somehow, like to, um, to, um, to, um, I, 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 I thought, what if, what if I try to mix the real world and the in-game world? Um, and to do this, um, I, I've collected a, a data set um, uh, of images, um, well, basically of screenshots from um, an old, uh, I guess it's like um, 2004 GTA video game. Um, I've collected um, a data set consisting of, um, I mean, about um, 200 screenshots uh, with uh, also with uh, uh, different buildings. So it's, it's kind of architectural photo of, of, of a sorts. And I, I started to uh, fine tune this uh, StyleGun2 neural network, which was initially used to generate um, like real world charges. And I, I, and I didn't like um, finish the process of this uh, fine tuning because I, did, I didn't want it to generate like um, in-game photos. I, I just wanted to see what if um, those charges um, become something in between the, the real world and the um, um, simplified um, uh, low, 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 low polygon uh, in-game world. And you can see what happens here. Um, you can see that those charges, um, they begin to shine. So I really like this um, effect of of uh, of of a um, of a shining light, so uh, you don't see this light uh, usually when you look uh, at a um, real war charge. But when those charges uh, are put in between uh, those two worlds, like imaginary world of um, a video game and the so-called real world, they begin to shine. So um, you discover the like kind of hidden light so um i i really like this uh, like hidden light idea of those images um yeah and um so um yeah, and it's it's being exhibited as a light box um pretty big um and also it's accompanied by um a short video uh where you can see well it's actually um um, the different um, it's, it's, it's the video of, of the neural network um, changing its uh, states. So uh, moving from one state to another state, and you can see it's it interpolating uh, from one image to another. And maybe I'll show a tiny bit of it. Um, I guess in my browser. Um, Give me a second. Um, yeah, so I like it most here um, or here. Yeah, so basically, Basically, I think this is it about about this project. If you have any questions, I, I would be um, I, I will answer them. Now I have a question. How did you use? Uh, how did you choose the points to interpolate uh, between of them in that and space? I mean, for the video. Um, I found like those um, like. Mm, I found those points where uh, you can see uh, like the shining images, so like like this one. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, because because I I like um, this um, shining uh, um, effect the most. Mm -hmm. Actually, sometimes it looks like it's uh, in fire. I mean, not like yeah. shining. <laughs> Notre Dame de Paris in fire. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly. Um, I said it many times, but for me, it looks like super picturesque. This art piece, I like it very much. Um, and it was like an inspiration for me a lot 
about this uncanny dream event. I think there is a lot of things to develop inside it. And I will just uh, just look uh, look forward for new for new art pieces of this stop in light project. Thank you very much. I'm really glad to hear it. Um, so um, if 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 there are no um, more questions about this work, I can move on and just say a few words about me in general. Um, yeah. So the first slide, which is which contains my name um, and surname. So um, well, um, I work um, I work um, both in um, traditional media and new media. But by traditional media, I mean photography. So basically, I I I, I really like uh, photography. Uh, let's, I'd say it's like maybe not so traditional photography but like conceptual photography and I also uh, work uh, in various new media so I like to uh, I, I like I like to make computer to generate uh, stuff uh, either text or images um, and I, I, I also like to mix it uh, with traditional media and see what happens um, okay so for I'm sorry that this presentation is partly in Russian, but it's okay because um, I'll explain everything in English. Um, for instance, I have a work which is called Alien Parts. And uh, what it does, it uh, converts uh, it converts poetry written in, in uh, Russian uh, into um, some sort of generative music. Uh, so it 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 um, um automatically it um it, like it it um it's, it's being created from um from the information about the part of speech of the words so different parts of speech uh, different parts of speech they get different uh, groups of sounds so for instance nouns they sound sounds like drums or um verbs or verbal categories they they, they sound like uh, i mean uh, chords of some sort so yeah and it's it was exhibited like this so it's basically a a screen with um headphones and you can see um just just uh one word at the moment on the screen and which is being played right now and actually you can you can well any any kind of poetry can be uh, transformed into music with this um, stuff. Um, also, um, I also like uh, I've also made some video games. Um, so, um, for instance, I have a, a work which is called "I Feel It Every Late Morning," and in fact, it's a piece of a non-game, as I'd say, because it's. It's, it does not have any like traditional game mechanics. It's just you're you're just supposed yeah, the the only action you can perform uh, is to turn the light off and on and see what happens. So you cannot win, you cannot lose, but um, you can just interact with it and see what happens. And interesting things start to happen when you do it. Um, um, yeah, and also I'd like to um, talk about another work, which is called uh, Lermont of Tsiolkovsky Chain. Um, and those those two surnames, the first one Lermontov is a Russian, um, famous Russian uh, poet of 19th century. Um, and the second one is a famous Russian, I'd say, scientist and philosopher uh, who wrote a lot about uh, traveling uh, to the distant stars. So basically, this project it mixes um, uh, photography, or j just uh, ordinary architectural photography, with um, with um, um, computer generated poetry. So you can see that it consists of um, nine images, and each image uh, is uh, accompanied by a um, 
a card. So it's uh, by a card. And this card contains some um, computer generated poetry. So um, uh, this uh, I used a really simple alg algorithm, no, no neural networks, just um, Markov chains. So some computer generated poetry, uh, which was generated um, um, using a data, data set consisting of uh, like romantic Russian poetry of 19th century and of uh, some like philosophical war, uh, works about uh, stars and traveling to the distant planets. And, and so it's, it's kind of uh, collage um, aesthetics and it's paired with uh, images. So it's like photographer, meaning me, um, or an artist working um, together with the machine. So machine machine produces um, some weird poems, some weird poems uh, in, in in Russian language, and I try to pair it with some um, with some um, like uh, manually created uh, image. Uh, so yeah. Can I have a question about this work? Uh, yeah. Uh, how did you combine the text generated by machine with the image, like uh, by your inner sense or somehow? I mean, uh, I could imagine like using some uh, machine vision to recognize some object and to use the the word uh, to to include this word to, to generate the some some text. Uh -huh. but I, I think that that would be a great idea um, for this project, but um, at the moment I just used like uh, uh, human vision, so I did like uh, my, my, myself combined, um, um, I, I, first I combined lines, so the computer it generated uh, just the lines and so I combined the lines to get the poem and, all, and I also com combined the poem with a, an appropriate image. So it's like, um, it's it's very much uh, human uh, created and very little of uh, machine presence is here. Okay, I also have a question about the first project you showed us uh, about the poetry, uh, translation poetry into music. Uh, could you show us uh, some, some I don't know, video or with sound or something like that, maybe to to let us listen to the project. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll just, um, yeah, there is a, give me a second. Uh... <laughs> Proof is that um, the sound like um, does does really depend on um, on the samples that you use and maybe um, so um, I, I have different groups of samples and those samples like were made by my friend who is a musician and um, you can if you if you compare uh, different poems uh, like with different lengths or of different time periods you start to perceive like some difference uh, between them because the, the tempo changes uh, if the length of the line changes for instance and so the, the well it, it it does really correlate with the text that you give it but uh, it also correlates with the samples uh, you are using, maybe much more than with text themselves. But it sounds so great. I love it. Oh, that's I'm so glad to hear it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, but uh, also you used uh, Maximus P, right? Uh, what did you oh. use to create the piece? 
No, no, I used Python. Python? Oh, okay, cool. I love it. It's really Thank great you. project. What I like how you combine the algorithms together with some uh, things which which have this, well, I mean, um, you, you really can feel some beauty uh, of like poetry of music of uh, I really hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not. It, it's it's really like warm feeling, a really human feeling. It's, it's beautiful. That's nice. <laughs> if if it is, that's really. I'm really glad to hear it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you uh, you don't really feel the same feeling so often if if we talk about uh, generative uh, stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes yeah. the idea is so beautiful, but you don't feel the same with the with the piece. But with your work, it's uh, like a perfect combination. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I've, I think I try to make computer sound uh, more uh, human-like. Um, this is in the that's a key. Way. I think mm -hmm. that's a key, definitely. The, the balance between the idea and the, the like uh, aesthetics. Cool. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, it was super nice to hear all your all your talks about the projects and to see your portfolios and your uh, artworks. It was super nice to hear your thoughts about them and uh, your ideas and practices. Um, I think we can. Uh, okay, we have a question to all artists represented. How do you see the future and development of your works? Uh, maybe Roma, you will start because you were the first one. How do you see the future and development of your works? Yeah, sure. So if we're talking about this work particularly, Manifest in Latin Space, which I presented on Uncanny Dreams exhibition, I would say that um, the development which I see is mostly like, you know, fine tuning this installation, like making it uh, better algorithmically, making it better aesthetically. But I'm not sure that in this particular direction I see any more, any further like huge conceptual development because it's kind of, it's, it's conceptually, it's a rather straightforward work like i give I, well, what i do is i give access towards like certain usually hidden hi, hi, hidden space and i'm not sure if uh, i see exactly the way to develop this particular work uh, like conceptual and a grand scale but in general about my artistic practice i think i'm gonna i'm going to go further into this like topic of interfaces as we have discussed yes because i like for me this is probably like my main point of focus right now is how these interfaces, how these points of access, how they conceal certain parts of technologies and reveal the other ones, and how for them we change the way we use technology, relate to technology, and well, yeah, basically like that. So actually right now I got really interested in computer games, because actually it's a very, it's a very, um, fruitful medium for experimentation with interfaces, I think. Yes, yeah, so I think I'm going to like, investigate this medium more deeply in the, uh, soon, <laughs> soon enough, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Anna, maybe you will answer. You already told us about the development of uh, you can touch, you can play, but maybe maybe you can add something more or repeat. How do you see the future and development of your works? Maybe I want uh, here in this work presented here. I love this interactive element uh, of audience, and maybe I want to make some more interactive works uh, projects uh, in the future i hope so but also this year i started working with objects and as you noticed for example and i find this it extremely interesting as well and i am just interested how i can uh, combine this work with technologies and uh, 
object making. For example, here in uh, You Can Touch, You Can Play, I also uh, experimented with sculptures of uh, this uh, fleshy women, uh, because when this is a sculpture of uh, a human body size, uh, this uh, may be even more uncanny as when it is uh, like a picture. So I want, for example, uh, do some sculptures here and maybe in some other projects as well. Yeah, it would be great to see the sculpture. Thank you. Okay, Vanya, what about you? Um, I'd say that um, now I'm, um, I'm, I'm really interested in the video game medium because be, it's been it's been um, like some years that I've uh, I that I've uh, like that I didn't create any video game and so I'd like to somehow appropriate the language of this medium and yeah. well maybe and I, I also I also would like to create some like um, some well well maybe some um, work involving um, the uh, the performance so the performance of the real bodies may be mixed with digital ones so this is like this this is this does really interest me right now that I didn't know what it would be but I think that that would be super super fun <laughs> but did you attend Elena's workshop about video games no uh, no 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 I didn't because because I I attended your uh, your workshop <laughs> yeah but that's why I was surprised you you were talking about video games that you're super interested and you didn't attend uh, Lina's workshop I think like oh yeah yeah we have this like uh, li limit in Russian art school like on the two workshops yeah we, we do <laughs> Uh, does video make... games are super trendy now we need more like workshop shops i think they're dedicated to this medium because it is super super ambitious for for the for the art field i would say mm -hmm. yeah but I, I think so yeah so it, it, i also like when they become combined with some kind of performance so in-game performances and this stuff it's just like crazy yeah true all right, uh, if you have more questions, please write them down in chat. Um, I would like to say to thank you, to say thank you to all of the participants uh, who joined us today for the curatorial tour or for the artist talks. Thank you to all artists uh, talking today for us, showing your ideas and portfolios. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, dear artists. Thanks. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks a lot for the discussion. Bye. Bye. bye.